One eighth means one divided by eight. The one on the top is the numerator, and the eight on the bottom is the denominator. The division bracket is like a little house. The numerator flies up and falls through the roof. Only the numerator is tall enough to do that. The denominator tries to get in, but the denominator is blocked by the wall. How many times does eight go into one? That means if I have one of something, how many times can I subtract eight? Write your answer directly above the one. The answer is zero. This zero shows us there are no whole numbers in the quotient. It's called a leading zero because it appears to the left of the decimal point. When we write the decimal point, we might erase the zero or keep it as a placeholder. The number one is a whole number. It has an invisible decimal point to the right. Write the decimal point directly on that line. Then move the decimal point up to the same place in the quotient, directly on that line. Use an arrow to show what you did. We have no tenths, no hundredths, and no thousandths. But we will write some zeros just to help us divide. We could stop after two decimal places to estimate the percent. Or we can continue to the third decimal place. Write those zeros between the lines to keep your columns straight. Look at the one and zero together. How many times does eight go into ten? The answer is one. One times eight is eight. It has one digit. It fits in the tenths column under the zero. It looks like ten minus eight equals two. It's really one. Minus eight tenths equals two tenths. Two tenths equals twenty hundredths. Use an arrow to show that you are bringing down a zero from the hundredths column. Twenty hundredths are being divided by eight. How many times does eight go into twenty? The answer is two. Hooray! Now we have two decimal places. That's enough to estimate the percentage. Here we go. You can read this decimal number as zero point twelve or point twelve, but the value is more obvious. When you say twelve hundredths, to describe the fraction with a horizontal bar, say twelve over one hundred. Now let's convert this decimal number to a percentage. Draw two curved arrows where the decimal point will move two spaces to the right. That's all the way to the end of this number, so the decimal point will disappear. But we will need a percent sign immediately to show that these are twelve hundredths. The leading zero was nice to help us see the decimal point, but now we can erase the zero. What have we learned about one eighth? One eighth is less than. Twelve hundredths or twelve percent. So one eighth is not equal to twelve hundredths or twelve percent, but one eighth is approximately twelve hundredths or twelve percent. 
Sometimes an estimate is all you need. But how can we get the exact answer? Let's continue dividing. 8 goes into 20 two times. Two hundredths times 8 is 16 hundredths. 20 hundredths minus 16 hundredths is 4 hundredths. Use an arrow to bring down the zero for the thousandths place. 40 thousandths divided by 8 is 5 thousandths with nothing left over. 40 thousandths minus 40 thousandths is 0. The decimal number tells you the fraction, 125 thousandths. Let's bounce to a clean space. Move the decimal point two spaces to the right. And write the percent symbol immediately. The decimal point is between two numbers, the 2 and the 5. So we can erase the leading 0. 1 eighth equals 125 thousandths, or 0.125. You can say 1 eighth equals 12.5% or 12.5%. All these are correct.